Hey everybody, it's Wednesday, time for Wisdom Wednesday. I was out last week. I was able to have a real vacation for the first time in a, quite a while and visited the northern part of the country up in Vermont to see some fall colors with a couple of college friends and their husbands. And oh, it was just absolutely fabulous. If you've never done that, I would suggest you consider that at some point. It was a beautiful experience. The colors were absolutely gorgeous in that area of the country, which I have traveled very little into, was just a very fun, quaint area to go and uh, enjoy a little bit of cooler weather and just the beautiful aspects of fall. Anyway, uh, today I thought I would visit with you about a few things that we were learning in some of the meetings that I've been to recently and revisit polycystic ovarian disease. This is a problem that we see and it's kind of mislabeled because it's really not a gynecologic problem. It's not really an ovarian problem, although many of the symptoms are a result of all that. But truly what is underlying it is an issue with just what we call insulin resistance. And you know, we've talked about that quite a bit, but it's thought that up to 10%, if not more, women are affected by this particular entity. And it's important to recognize because it puts women, even postmenopausal women, not just childbearing age women, at great risk for cancer and for diabetes, as well as some other long-term problems, heart disease, strokes, endometrial cancer, etc. And so it's important to recognize this particular entity. And a lot of women in the premenopausal age would present with infertility problems. They might present with irregular periods, excessive hair growth in the body, acne. Um, sometimes there's challenges with skin pigmentation, particularly darkness around the neck and the underarms and um, thinning hair as well as difficulty with managing weight. And although there's a spectrum and you can have very, very thin women that have this entity, but then certainly women who are overweight also having that visceral internal fat issue and uh, more on the other end of the spectrum, but it can, it can cross all levels of sizes of women. So it's not just overweight women who have this particular problem. And it's, it's kind of a chronic condition. It's a genetic condition. It's something that a woman is born with and it must be recognized and not overlooked. We know that a lot of, of uh, these women generally present in a gynecologist's office and therefore would generally be treated by putting them on birth control pills to regulate cycles as well as trying to reduce some of the testosterone or androgenic type of side effects that can occur, such as the hair growth and the acne. But knowing this is an entity is something that's very important because we want to try to treat it and treat the underlying cause, not just treat the symptoms of it, the irregular periods, etc. You want to lower the aspect of insulin resistance within the body. So a lot of the mainstay treatment involves using metformin, which is a diabetic drug, initially used as a diabetic drug. And so that can be really helpful for helping to lower this insulin resistance problem, but also looking at it from a nutritional standpoint and trying to utilize a lower carb nutritional program making sure that people exercise and looking at some of the lifestyle issues that are there, trying to help with weight loss. So we're certainly, obviously, as you know, big on intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating, less snacking, no light, late night eating. And uh, we know that this can, that the medications such as metformin can increase insulin sensitivity and help women also become pregnant who are struggling with infertility issues. Uh, we know that uh, it's important to look at 
all aspects of health and wellness. And you know, we always look at diet, nutrition, and supplements. We look at sleep issues. We look at exercise issues and hormonal management. And one of the biggest things that is a risk for folks with PCOS is that because they don't ovulate and they've got these larger ovaries with multiple tiny little follicles in them, and they're not ovulating, they're not producing enough progesterone. They tend to have high, excuse me, high estrogen levels overall, but they're just not producing enough progesterone. So it's important that we balance that estrogen with progesterone. And these women need to, if they're not on birth control pills, to be cycling or at least taking some progesterone to, to minimize overall risk. So hopefully that has given you some ideas. If you have concerns about irregular periods or changes in cycles or have concerns with some of these androgenic type side effects such as abnormal hair growth and issues with acne or had issues as you were growing up, these things might be part of it. And, and most physicians can tell either through history or sometimes through blood tests and occasionally utilizing an ultrasound to look at the ovaries, this can be diagnosed and then approached in a good stepwise approach to help to manage this to lower all the risks and, and really protect women with this type of entity from having major problems. Hope you all have a great week and we'll talk again next week.